if you're taking up too much room. Barrel loads of building mayhem. They come back and bite your ass. We will win this. A hint of heartaches, nothing new. Three grand is going down the swanny. High hopes for their beer, but do the public like it too? You haven't got a clue what you're on about. Prime presents Neil Morrissey's Risky Business, Sunday. Welcome back, New Zealand. The Silver Ferns got a new sponsor today, but since we don't do sponsor naming stories, I'm interested in seeing what James Somerset comes up with. Me too, because if he mentions the sponsor, he'll be fired. He'll also be fired if he uses his microphone to pick up birds, which he does all the time. The current global recession spells tough times for sports organisations trying to find new sponsors. But, ah, uh, McCain, you've done it again. Maybe all the girls could go out fishing and Julie, you're in the kitchen cooking them pizza when they get home and don't catch anything. <laughs> <laughs> Only because you're like the, you know, the camp mother type. Yeah. <laughs> Cue awkward silence. Maybe not pizza, maybe just some healthy beans or something. Sure. <laughs> so then it was into a cook-off to see how the girls stack up in the kitchen. That looks nice. Oh, it looks really nice. It's just cutting out the leeks to put in the wee pot there. Will you get disqualified if I help you out? No, you go for it. You yeah. Go for it. How excited are you about all the Silver Ferns program this year? It's a big, big one. Yeah, it's massive actually. They've got lots of games, lots of test matches, um, lots of travel as well around the place. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's, um, it's an exciting time. Just hypothetically, right. if I was coming round for a meal or oh, something right. and you were going to cook it for me, what yeah. would it be, your specialty, to really woo me? Oh, to, oh, to woo you? Oh, gosh. Uh, probably a, like maybe a rack of lamb or something, you know? Oh, oh. <laughs> How did, you, did he tell you lamb was my favourite? No, I didn't know. I thought it was about time I went and saw how Julie Seymour was getting on. But she'd retired. Julie, what are you doing out here? We've been, I've been flat oh, out in there cooking for you. Have you? Yeah, we're getting yeah. Okay, I've got to get in there. If you win, I've got to get some cred for oh that. Oh, my God, thank you so much. Competition was heating up. It was definitely turning into a thriller. Watch it, watch it. <laughs> oh, that's... And back again. Mate, James Somerset, crowd goes wild. Uh, was that story uh, just a little sexist with the women cooking and everything? Yeah, I thought it was. No, I didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't, Mark. Even though it was, it was like a media launch from the 1950s. We love the Ranfilly Shield at the Crowd Goes Wild, so you can imagine when our excitement when Wellington's Heartland Tour stopped off in Wanganui today. The Butcher Boys are the best of the lot of visions, and they were determined to lift the shield, even if it was just to touch it briefly. And then do a bit of cooking. <laughs> After the ceremonial chopping of the Wellington jersey, we caught a glimpse of some prime Wanganui beef. And Captain David Gow led his team out even though he fell down a ravine on his farm last week. That's tough. And the Wanganui try line wasn't crossed until Wellington went all England 03 with a Johnny Wilkinson cross kick in the 20th minute. Finds the bounce. And the first try of the match is scored by Alapate Leua. Daniel Kirkpatrick sneaked over for the second, but that's all the big guns could manage in the first half because they did things like catch the ball when they were out. Wanganui started the second half with the enterprise, but wandering wing David Smith stayed in this time. After Charlie Natai dotted down, Wanganui's best chance to score was thwarted by the referee. 